the Lord. Amen. Let's take another song. Hymn number 367. Jerusalem on high.
Amen. My God would be to see thy face. Father, we thank you this evening for all your blessings. And now you have been with us from when we left here on Sunday up to this time, Lord. Thank you for giving us your presence to enjoy. What great privilege it is that we can come to you in great times of need. Be thou exalted. Father Lord, we have needs. We bring before you this evening the cry of parents. The cry, O oh Lord, of little children. Those that are in serious despair. We're asking for deliverance. We're asking for healing. Lord, remember your children. In whatever way that they want your touch, grant it, Lord. Amen. Pray tonight, O oh God, that your word will come and bless us. Amen. Help those that are coming in the way. How we have heard that the road is so blocked in, due to traffic. We pray that you open the road for your children to come to meetings. Amen. Bless us tonight and give us, O oh Lord, your blessings in Amen. wonderful ways. Amen. Thank you, Father, once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Okay. We will begin early so we can leave early because we have the report that the roads are very tight. Maybe not your end, but there are those who are coming from very, very squeezy roads. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Okay. Uh, the two weaknesses. God and his two weaknesses will, will soon be ready. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it will be by the grace of God, maybe by Monday or Tuesday, we should have it. Amen. Amen. And also, the last journal we had, the color it's making it difficult for people to read. Amen. So we are making it this way. So that it is readable. Black and white. Amen. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Please would you lift up the fan. You can raise it up. So. Hallelujah. We have lots of things to study this evening, and we pray the grace of God upon us tonight. Amen. I see those that are just coming in. The Lord also bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let us take this song as we can sit down to sing it. Psalm 76, verse 10 to 12. La 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 la. La 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 
la la la la la la the bible says our sacrifices must be holy amen so when you come in the presence of the lord find time to pray before you do anything even as you sit in the congregation to sing you are singing unto the lord you're not singing for yourself so we are not having an entertainment here amen we are having a worship and it's not a joke so and you don't when you come in the presence of the lord refresh your spirit and refresh your, your body so you don't go and give your strength to the labor of life and then you say that you are even trying to come to church don't try to come if you can't come stay at home amen come to the lord with all your strength he said he wants you to worship him with all your might all your strength and all your soul amen praise the lord so that we will not come and get problems instead of blessings amen, amen. psalm 80 what psalm is that 86 sorry i said 76 86 Just worship the Lord with this song. Hallelujah. Great blessing. For thou hast great and doest wondrous things. Thou hast called alone, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth, unite my heart to fear.
Thank you, Father Lord. Let your name be glorified forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks on to the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks on to the Lord. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks Psalms 92. On to the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles. So Matthew chapter four. It's a little lengthy, not too lengthy subject tonight. We will try to see if we can close up on the two weaknesses. Amen. Amen. And rightly dividing this word of truth. Matthew chapter 4. Let me read the last temptation the last two temptations that Jesus encountered. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an high, exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee. Amen? Amen. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. 
Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May be seated this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how many of you have been following this subject closely. Amen. So some things were said on Sunday in a rush. We really wanted to have a short service on Sunday. Amen. So some things were said in a rush. We need time to break that down so that we will not leave anyone in any form of confusion. Praise the Lord. I don't know the strength of our projector. It's going to, it might be frustrating because I have some quotes from the sermons of William Braham to add to this subject today. Amen. But I will sure read what I can read to help us. Hallelujah. Verse 11 again. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So the title of this message is identifying the unnamed angels in the scriptures. We've had instances where angels had encounters with humans on earth. And those humans were bold enough to ask them, what is thy name? To ask these angels, what, what is your name? And the angel will decline from telling his name. And one even said, why do you ask me my name? Knowing it is secret. Not a secret. Knowing it is secret. But are we sure that that secret was not told? The secret was told. And we are sure that the secret was told to Daniel. Praise the Lord. Because to Daniel, God was a revealer of secrets. Revealed to Daniel secrets. Things to come. Even the Bukhaneza said, Amen. Was telling them about Daniel. Was testifying about Daniel. Saying him, they have in whom the wisdom of the gods dwell. That is God dissolves doubt and a revealer of thoughts and secrets. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, we are going to take it gradually. When the Bible talks about the angel of the Lord, we have to start from there first of all. An angel it's an angel. Angels are angels. But the angel of the Lord has something with the presence of the Lord. It is the Lord manifesting his presence. 
Praise the Lord. But it is not as though that God is an angel. Amen. He manifests his presence through an angel that is so special to him. Or at other point, I'm going to show you something as we get along. So let us start from there this evening to identify the angel of the Lord. The first will be Moses. Amen. Moses. We know that Abraham had an encounter with the angel of the Lord. But let's look at something with Moses. And that is in Exodus chapter 3. So we're taking it as simple, slowly as we can so people can catch. If you have questions, you may ask right after. Verse 1 of chapter 3, Exodus. And Moses, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even in Horeb. How many of you know that this mountain of God is in Saudi Arabia? Amen. And that particular mountain is part of the land of Israel. And before Jesus will come, Israel will overtake that place and take their land because that's what God promised them. Praise the Lord. So, presently in the mountain of God, amen, amen. <laughs> that mountain of God, amen, it's a stretch. Because Jerusalem is called the mountain of his holiness. So it's like a stretch of land, amen, from the west going to the east. We're going to see something. Verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the, plain of, in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. The bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Amen? And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not consumed. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the fire and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not nigh Either. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Amen. So let's look up a little. Was that fire God? Answers are very scanty. Was the fire God? Okay, I have a problem with this fire. This fire was burning, but it was not consuming. How many of you know that God <laughs> is a consuming fire? Amen. So now, we're going to compare something. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses. For clarification, let us go to what we read on Sunday in chapter 23, so as we can confirm this angel of the Lord. Chapter 23 
I don't know who is going to read for us from verse 20. I will read that two verses, but let somebody prepare. You can be a sister. Anybody who wish to read for me. I read from verse 20. Exodus chapter 23. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. I want to ask the question. Is God, now God just spoke in chapter 23. Is God now sending the angel in chapter 23 or the angel has been? Has the angel been sent already or God is going to send? That's why I came to start early so that we can study. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's better you make a mistake here. Amen. Then when you go outside, you will not make mistakes. Are you listening to me? We interact. I want us to interact. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the Sunday scriptures you see here, they were seated like this, like this. From this place, the Lord has raised them. Amen. And it is that you have to interact. Praise the Lord. Every gift of God must speak. Sisters also must testify. Amen. Amen. Testify in your shop. Testify everywhere. The only thing is, do not make additions and make reference back to your pastor or to anybody that will help finish the work. Amen. Are you listening? So, the Bible says in chapter 23 and verse 20, it says, I will send an angel, and I say, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. And my question is, the angel that he is talking about here in chapter 23, is he about sending him or he has sent him already? That was the angel Moses met in the burning bush. Amen. So what, what Moses met in the burning bush, the Bible was clear to tell you it was the angel of the Lord. The angel of his presence. And that angel has his own name. The angel of his presence is not Jehovah. Jehovah, God is spirit. God is what? Spirit. Now, why was the bush burning? Was it actually a fire? It was not actual fire. It was the body of the angel. Angels have body, but their bodies are fires. Can you understand me? You, you have body of flesh. The angel has body of fire. Amen. They call them flaming torches. Amen. The skin of an angel is fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. So watch something now. Let's look at verse 21. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, your transgressions, for my name is in him. Beware of him, provoke him not, obey his voice, for he will not pardon your transgressions, but I will pardon your transgressions, but he will not pardon your transgressions. Because he does not like it when the Lord is disobeyed. Let me tell you something. If you work in a company and you make a mistake, they ask you, between the manager and the director, who do you want to face? You should face the director. The manager will want to impress the director by sacking you. That's what is in this case now. God is saying to Israel, to Moses and Israel, this angel will not pardon 
your transgressions. Why? My name is in him. Is he God? No. He's the angel of his presence. Jacob met him. And Jacob was a bold man. You know, after Jacob wrestled with him, not with hand. Oh, pastor, he wrestled with him, but he wound Jacob in his thigh bone. Yes. Amen. But not, it was not a wrestling of, of, hold me, I fall you. No. It was wrestling of words and of agony and strength in the spirit realm. If you can't hold God with your hand, but you can hold it by go hold him by a law. Amen. There's something you will know, and that will help you to hold God. Hallelujah. So watch what happened here. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. Take note, I want to read this to the end of 23. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee unto the Amorites, the Hittites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, amen, and the Canaanites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Take note, Jebusites. Six of them, representing the sixth trouble of a man's life. I will cut them off. So, brethren, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. If this angel is sent before Moses and Israel, this angel must be Michael. Because the scripture has given you the clue that Michael is thy great priest that standeth for thy people, Israel. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. The same that met with Jacob. The same that we're going to see that met with a man called Joshua in Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 5. Let's go down there. The book of Joshua chapter 5. Identifying the unnamed angels in scriptures. Now Joshua chapter 5. Brother Nice, what is the importance of this? No, it's not important to you. You can just go and sleep. Amen. It's important to us here in Life Assurance Tabernacle. Correct? <laughs> Amen. It's important to those that are following us online. It's important. Okay, in verse 13, we're going to read something. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Now, you reading this scripture, you will feel that Joshua was a man like me in size. Of course, if Joshua is a human being, he cannot be more than seven feet. I doubt if he was even seven. He was never seven. He would be five point something or six at the most. Amen. 
And then you find out that Joshua, he was going that night to spy the wall of Jericho. So he came and he was thinking, oh Lord, how will this wall fall? Joshua was not thinking about falling down the wall. He was thinking of how they will enter into Jericho. Which way are they going to succeed to infiltrate the people of Jericho and kill them? Then he met another man. What was the size of this man? <laughs> he appeared in many sizes. Praise the Lord. But, sisters, I want to tell you, this man was very huge. Amen. He stood up high there. The Bible said, over against the wall. If any other person was there, they wouldn't see him. But Joshua saw him. Why? Joshua was the voice of God for that generation. Why did Joshua see him? Because in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, there was a promise made to Joshua by God. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee, with you. But I want to ask a question. How was God with Moses? He was God with Moses by the angel of his presence. And he also will be with Joshua by the angel of his presence. So Joshua, all this while, Joshua has been parading himself as the captain of the host. And Israel is the army of the Lord, correct? But Joshua did not know that there was another army of Israel that are not physical. Amen. Amen. So, hear him say here. Because Joshua asked him, who are you? Are you for us or your, our enemies? With his sword, drawn out. Joshua also drew his own sword. Amen. Say, be you spirit. Our fathers fought spirit. Jacob fought with the spirit. Be you whatever. I will fight you. A Christian should be happy when the battle is spiritual. Because God is a spirit. Our strength is in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't go talking and quarreling and forcing all this while. Don't need it. Verse 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Joshua paid, made obeisance. Amen. He bowed down himself. He's, a, he's, an, he's an Israelite. He worshipped. Amen. In the Old Testament, those things were allowed. But in the New Testament, John would be told, no, don't do it. Amen. Are you listening? Hallelujah. And the captain of the Lord so said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. So let me ask you, was this Mount Horeb? Was this Mount Horeb? Was he close to Mount Horeb? No, it was Jericho. How come that place is holy? This place is holy. How many places is holy? No place, but the Lord is holy. Anywhere the Lord is, the place is holy. Amen. Hallelujah. I want everyone to be carried along. And not to be left behind. Praise the Lord. We are coming. So, those are two manifestations of Michael. I've mentioned, in fact, that's are three. Jo Jacob, Moses, Joshua. Amen. Okay? Now, let's look at another manifestation of the other one. 
In the book of Judges, Judges, chapter 13. Oh, Father, thank you. Let's take this reading from verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites. Take note of where it is, Danite, from Dan, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord, not an angel, and the angel of the Lord did what? Appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren. And bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Hallelujah. Then he gave her instruction. He says, now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not anything unclean. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For thou shalt, for the child shall be a Nazarite, unto God from, his, from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. And the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came unto me. Did she call him an angel? A man of God, because he came, no matter size, amen, and walked like a man. The, man, the woman being a Jew, just believe that this man must be a prophet. But the Bible writer says, the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah! I don't know whether some of you have just even misbehaved in presence of one without knowing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Because this one comes around. We're going to see. What verse is that? The woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no drink, nor now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Manoah prayed with his wife requesting the presence of of God's angel. Did God answer? Let's read it. And God hearkened, verse 9, to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she, she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not there with her because she has the message. Amen. So he came to her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man had appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Are thou the man that speaketh unto, my wife, unto the woman? And he said, I am. No, this I am is not this is the same with I am that I am. It's just simple English, I am. And Manoah said, Now, let, the words, let thy words come to pass. 
how shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? And the angel said unto, and the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto that woman, let her observe. Let, it, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh out of the vine. Neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded, let her observe. 15. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made a ready kit for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Do thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. I am coming down a little. But I am confused. Aren't you? The beginning of the story says, the angel of the Lord. And when we talk about the angel of the Lord, that should be the angel of his presence. Amen. But the angel of the Lord, when it was time for offering, said, no, offer it to God. He could not accept it. Now watch. This angel could not eat the way they ate when they were with Abraham. Do you know why? Because this wearing was a camouflage. It was not like the day with Abraham. In the day with Abraham, God actually took real flesh and real ashes upon them. This one will not sweat, but that one sweats. Praise the Lord. This one will not be dusty, but that one was dusty. But it's the same. He was there with Abraham that day because he's the angel of the Lord. Think about it. Okay. Are we following? Is it boring? You tired? Amen. Okay, I cannot be faster than this today. So watch something. What did he say here? What verse is that? Verse 17. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? <laughs> that when thy saints come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why seek after, why askest thou thus after my name? Seeing it is secret. Not a secret. Seeing it is secret. Amen. Please, who, who was this angel? Amen. You see, God does not run haphazardly. He did not send one angel to Zechariah at the temple to announce the birth of a child and send another angel to Mary to announce the birth of a child. No. Whoever announced the birth of the child in the New Testament, the same was the one who announced the birth of this child. And that's Gabriel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why? Amen. The angel of his presence. Brother Abraham calls Gabriel he says, the angel that stands at the right hand of God. Now, when I heard that first time, when I read that first time, many years, many years ago, maybe before the year 2000, I said, ah, how can Brother Abraham say the angel that stands at the right hand of God is Gabriel? Why not Michael? Until things became clearer. Amen. Because from that right hand, he's going to source the Gentiles, his bride, for himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you hear that? Okay. So let us look at another angel. Amen. In Numbers chapter 22.
Let's be fast. A little. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. I have nobody to help me read today. So I'm, I'm suffering, wearing, getting tired, reading and then talking. Okay. Let us look at this verse. Uh, Numbers 22. Excuse me. Where is it on my notes? Let's look at verse 21. Numbers 22, verse 21. Yes. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and it saw drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a war being on this side and a war on that side. Yes. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against wow. the wall, mm. and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right, to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled. And he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would dare wear, I would dare wear a sword in, the, in my hand. I would dare wear a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, I am not I thine ass, mm -hmm. upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine, I was thine unto this day. Was I ever wont do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and he saw drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Let's stop there. God bless you. This Balaam was one special man. But of all his speciality, he went to hell. The kind of manifestations that we see with Balaam, I don't think we have seen with most of these other Israelite prophets. But he was not a Jew, but he was born with a sign. He was a gifted man, a seer. But who was Balaam? Balaam was actually a sorcerer. He was, what do you call him? What's the right word there? A soothsayer. Not a sorcerer, a soothsayer. One who read signs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who makes enchantments. That's why God warned them against enchanting against the Israelites. Now, he was purely a Gentile person. And there is no way that the one who stands for Israel can appear to him. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. But the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared unto Balaam and blocked his way. The donkey saw him, but Balaam did not see him. And Balaam was busy threatening and hitting the donkey. Amen. Until God opened his eyes and he did see. And when he saw, he fell down, also made obeisance. 
Praise the Lord. That angel is the angel of the Lord. Amen. And that angel is Gabriel. Because that is the pastor of the nations. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now this, what we have been doing for the past 30 minutes is just a preamble of settling all the, the area, touching all the areas that need to be touched about these angels. Amen. So, we will go back to where we quoted, where we read our text. But for clarity's sake, if I would take some few minutes, maybe two or three, to read just this quote. Amen. Please. A very popular message that is titled, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Preached in 1963, July 28. Paragraph 368. Amen. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. If somebody can get that for me. Okay. Paragraph what did I say? 368. It's down, 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 down. Okay. I will just read from here, paragraph 368. Three sixty-eight. Now listen. The Holy Ghost alone shows who he is. No prophet or his kings. And here God is manifested in flesh. Here is the fullness. He is completely revealed and made known to the world. Oh my. 369. Look on the Mount Transfiguration. Listen. When the testimony of God himself, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. There stood Moses representing the law. There stood Elijah representing the prophets. But he, they passed away. He said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. There were there was three represented, the law, the prophet, and Christ. This is him, God, fully, not manifested in prophets, not manifested by law, but manifested in Christ. He is. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, you see him talking about Moses and Elijah what they represent. I've been making those statements. Amen. And we also made that statement concerning Michael and Gabriel that they represent, amen, the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this uh, other message titled Revelation. Chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. In its original Revelation chapter 4. Amen. Paragraph 65. Can somebody find that for me? Revelation chapter 4. Uh, that is 1961, January 1. T 
Do you have it? Paragraph 65. If you have it, please read. Okay. It's part two. Okay, I've seen it. No. Paragraph 65 says, There we seen him representing those who died. Okay, let me read that. There we seen him representing those who died. Moses representing death sense. Rose. Elijah with his group at the last day. With his raptured group standing there. All before the Lord Jesus. John revealed. John told them. He will not die. And what, it, what was it to them? If he will live until he sees his coming. The disciples put a saying out. Amen. Now many people say, oh, John didn't die. No, he later died, brother. They already saw it that few days. Seven days, six days later on the seventh day. Jesus appeared. Uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. And Moses and Elijah appeared. And God called them his angels. His holy angels. So please take notes. Amen. Leave other quotes. Let's just go back to where we started. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. It says, And angels came and ministered unto him. If you say what your pastor says, that there, are, there were two angels. Is that what I said? Amen. People are not sure. What did I, how many angels did I say there were? Why do you believe it? So if they ask you, <laughs> prove it that there are two angels, how will you prove it? You will say that the pastor said there were two angels. We don't want such believers. Amen. Are you listening to me? Okay, now we're going to look it clearly and see what it is. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. God runs his program clearly. God does not do something and they say, uh, we are not sure. No, clearly. Clearly. Tell your neighbor clearly. How many of you have seen the time, the woman of God in the Bible? Lift up your hand. The woman of God. You've seen it in the Bible, the woman of God. Any, you, you can just type it in your search machine. The woman of God. The woman of God is only in redeem. Matter of fire. Whatever. In the Bible, it doesn't exist. Now, you're going to see something now. Genesis chapter 3, verse 23. So, read for me. Verse 23. Yes. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden mm -hmm. to till the ground from whence he was taken. So, he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way. To keep the way of the tree of life. Amen. Who did the Lord God drove out of the garden? Who did he drive out of the garden? When you say man, man means male and female. Amen. But who actually did he drive out of the garden? He drove Adam out. He drove him. And he took his wife. Amen. God had business with the man. Because God did not give the woman any commandment. So, the, if a teacher didn't teach a course, he doesn't need to set exams. The test was for Adam. 
And Adam fell to God. So God came, the Bible says, in verse 24. So he drove out the man. Is it 23? 24. 23, 23. Okay. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden. God sent him forth. However he wants to go, if he wants to carry his wife, he has to, but he sent him forth. Amen. It was for the woman he died, so he has to carry her along. Of course. Glory be to God. Now, 24 is where we are going. And he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turneth every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Glory be to God. Amen. So God drove them away, and then God placed cherubims. How many cherubims? I, if you were here on Sunday, you should answer. How many cherubims? Two. The question is, you, are keep, you keep saying what I say. How do you prove it? Amen. So they don't get to be like those who say what the prophets say. Hallelujah. Two cherubims. And the flaming sword was not in the hand of any, in a, any of the cherubim. The swimming flood was independent of itself. It still shows what he showed to Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Two cherubims. And let us see scriptures to prove that. Amen. Glory be to his name. Two cherubims. Hallelujah. Let's look at this scripture in the book Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. I want you to read for me verse 18 to 22. Exodus 25 from verse 18. Now watch and play, pay close attention to what is being read. Yes. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Wait, 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 wait. Why two? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, is settled, it is settled in heaven forever, forever, O Lord. Hallelujah, thy word is set to in heaven. It is set to one more time forever, forever, O Lord. Hallelujah, thy word is set to in heaven. Amen. It is set to in heaven. Amen. How many cherubims? Now, what is he going to do with the cherubims? Make them, yes? Two cherubims of gold. Of gold. Of beaten work shall thou make them. Yes. In the two ends of the mercy seat. Yes. And make one cherub on the one end. Yes. And the other cherub on the other end. Yes. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims. 
on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high. Yes, sir. Covering the mercy seat with their wings. Yes, sir. And their faces shall look one to another. Yes. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Okay. And thou shalt put Stop. them. Stop. We have to show you what that is. Close your Bible, brother. And come. We did this on Sunday. Now, stand like this. Face me. This is the Ark of Covenant. The Ark of Covenant represents God himself. Are you following me? Then the, com the command was that make two cherubims on top of this Ark. One at the end, the other at the other end. The cherubs, they have hands. But the cherubs also have wings. Praise the Lord. When it comes to dealing with the Lord, it is not all angels that are cherubs. Amen. We even say Lucifer was an anointed cherub. Praise the Lord. Now watch this. They will overspread their hands up. And they look at themselves. Do you see? Amen. But listen to me. No Israelite can touch that ark. Remember that Uzzah wanted to help him not to fall. And he did what? He died. What was in the ark? It was the testimony. The testimony of the Old Testament was there. Are you listening to me? The manna was inside it. And the rod of Aaron was there. Are you following me? Now, in that particular place, they stayed like this, and it was a symbol of what was happening in heaven. That on this messy seat, it looks empty here, but in heaven, there will be one seated on that mercy seat, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Making intercession for you. When you pray, it is not what you pray that goes. He takes the prayer and repray it for you. Because he is the one that will want to answer. So he, he talks to himself what he wants to answer. Praise the Lord. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Two cherubs. Sister, what verse is that? 21. Read on to 22. Okay. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony mm -hmm. that I shall give thee. Mm -hmm. and, there, and there I will meet with thee. And there I will meet with thee. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From above the mercy seat. That's when I will talk with you. From between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. Yes, sir. Of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. God bless you. Now, have the ark ever spoken before? Talk to me. <laughs> you were trying to make sound if you don't know say you don't know amen the flaming sword amen signify the word of God the flaming sword also signify death amen that's why if you need to come to God you must die What we do here, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is death in Christ. Is dying to self and living for Christ. You must die. You can join any other church. You can't join this one. You are baptized and are added, you are added to the body. Amen. And if so be, then let no living be found in you. 
Because God is going to expose. He's going to expose. You see people doing campaign, printing posters. Have you ever seen our posters outside? We don't need to do that. Posters. To call who? Amen. You may not know how you came here. But watch something. Let's look at another secret. Numbers chapter 7 verse 1 and 2. And I want a, a Numbers chapter, chapter 7, sorry. Numbers chapter 7 verse 88 and 89. That's the longest of Moses' uh, verses or Moses' uh, books. The longest chapter. Numbers chapter 7. Numbers chapter 7. Numbers. Read, read verse 89. Let's just go straight because of time. Numbers. 89 and verse 1 and 2 of verse 8, of chapter 8. 7 verse 89. Yes. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation. When Moses went into the tabernacle, yes. To speak with him. Yes. Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat. Listen to me. The ark spoke. That was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims. Are you hearing me now? And he spoke. Now, I want to ask you now. How many of you are confident enough? To believe that the cherubims that were in the garden of Eden that blocked Adam and Eve from going back to the tree of life were two of them. And they were Moses and uh, Michael and Gabriel. There is no, there were no three wise men anywhere. That is Catholic tradition. Three wise men. They give gold. Uh, Frankincense and man. No, brother. The two wise men that came, each of them brought gold. Each of them brought frankincense. Each of them brought man. They knew that they must meet the king with these things. There were two wise men. Because you cannot break the, the revelation of God is not epileptic. You cannot break the series. You cannot break the sequence. It's straight. Which verse are you reading, sister? Okay. That, that was verse 89. 89. Yes. They spoke to Moses. Moses was spoken to from where? From the, from the mercy seat. Yes, speaking of the Praise the Lord. Amen. What did he say to Moses? Let's look at the next chapter. I want you to see that Moses talked about the seven church ages. Look at it in verse, verse 1 of chapter 8. Yes. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Yes. Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. Uh-huh. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick. As the Lord commanded Moses. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if we look at this chapter 7 verse 89 and chapter 8 verse 1 and 2, 3, we find out that exactly what Zechariah was talking about. The two olive trees. How many of you know that those, that mercy seat was made with, with olive? The wood used for the Ark of Covenant was of olive tree. Go and check it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you understand? God has ordered his things from the beginning. Nothing will surprise him. You cannot surprise God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Oh my, 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 my. We're going to move on to the last one now. And this one is really serious. Amen. Do you have, you understand so far? Is it clear? Amen. There were two cherubims blocking the Garden of Eden, the gates of the Garden of Eden, the entrance. Now, what we want to talk about next will affect that also. And the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the last one is Onan the Jebusite. How many of you have heard the man Onan the Jebusite? Another name for him is Arauna. Arauna the Jebusite. I like to write that for clarity's sake. Ornan. Ornan. Or Arau Arauna. God told Moses and Joshua, I will kill all the Jebusites. I will kill all the Hivites. I will kill all the Canaanites, all the Hittites. But for one reason we don't understand, Arauna, Onan was left. And he was left as the final man that held this most important place in the whole of the land of Israel. This man had an inheritance where they were having, they were threshing. The threshing floor of Onan, the Jebusite. Praise the Lord. And God wanted that place because it was his. Let me tell you something. The way God does something, it might be that God wants to pass here. He will go and scatter something there. He will take people's attention there. Because he only revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God wants this place. It's a simple thing for the Lord to just set, send soldiers and they'll just carry that man. Kill him, kill his wife. Amen. Kill all his children. He had four sons. And they will claim the place. But no. Every other place was taken by blood. But this place, no. God will not take it by force. No blood must be shed there. Why? Let the scripture speak to us now. Let's start with second first Samuel chapter twenty four. Is this second Samuel rather? Chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. Quickly. Second Samuel chapter 24. I want to read the first verse. What does it say? Second Samuel chapter 24. Verse 1. Verse 1. Are you there? Okay, let me read. Again and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. God was angry with Israel. I'm going to tell you why. When God was angry with them, he moved against them by moving David to desire to count them. Now, what is the sin in counting people? Let's read it from 
First Chronicles chapter 21 from verse 1. That will be a different version now. It's the same story, but told from a different perspective. And I want to see whether there is a contradiction. God was angry with Israel and he moved David to number the people. Second Samuel chapter 24. Now, First Chronicles chapter 21. Are you there? Amen. Okay, read my brother. First Chronicles chapter 21 from verse 1. Yes. And Satan stood up against Israel. Now, Satan stood up against Israel and, and provoked David to number Israel. And provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Yes. Go, number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan. And Watch. bring the number of them to me. Watch what he I said. I may know it. He said, from Dan even to Bathsheba. Now, from Dan. Take note, from Dan. Remember that the other angel met the wife of Manoah in Dan. Are you listening to me? Okay. Where is Dan? That's the border. They were the ones that took half the other side. Amen. And the half tribe of Manasseh. Amen. Amen. If you follow Joshua chapter 1, you will understand how they shared the land. Now, children of God, I want you to listen. Please pay attention. Let us use this few time moment to clear something. In 2 Chronicles, in 2 Samuel, the Bible says God provoked Israel. In 1 Chronicles, the Bible says Satan. The question is, who did? Are you confused? Is anybody that is confused here? Yeah? Is it God or Satan that did it? Then why did the Bible write Satan? Talk to me. God uses his servant, Satan, even in your life. And you must not reject God's servant. Amen. Amen. You must behave yourself as God wants you to behave without his servant. Praise the Lord. Okay? Alright. We don't need to talk about that. We have many teachings on that. Amen. So that's why I was looking at your faces. Should there be anybody that looks as if he's confused? No. God was angry with Israel and he kicked Satan to kick David. Go and number the people. Now, it was not a sin to number the people of Israel, but the thing is that there was a law on how to number Israel. When you count the people of Israel, everyone that is counted is counted unto the Lord and that person must give an offering. You hear me? <laughs> Exodus chapter 30 says that you can just write it down and read it at home. When you count the people of Israel, you are counting them unto the Lord. And because you count them unto the Lord, anything that has to do with the Lord, an offering must come. That's why many wishes of parents fail and flop. They want their children to be this, that, 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 that. Until the Lord has them, you don't have them. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going quickly. So now, jump now. Which book are you reading? You that you are reading Second Chronicles. I will stay with. Uh, uh, you are reading First Chronicles. I'll stay Chronicles with Second Chronicles. Yes, jump to verse fourteen of Second Chronicles. Verse fourteen of that cha chapter. Verse fourteen of chapter twenty-one. Verse fourteen. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. Yes. And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. Yes. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. Yes. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld 
And he repented him of the evil hmm. and said to the angel that destroy it, that destroy it is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor, floor. of Onan, the Jebusite. Amen. Stop Amen. there. The Lord sent pestilence. Now, pestilence is anything that can come like a disease or like something like, uh, how do you call it, an epidemic. But actually, it was the sword of the angel. Which angel is this? It was Michael. He started killing from Dan. He started from morning. Amen. And he was killing, coming. By the time he got to Jerusalem, he had killed 70,000 people. Men. They didn't count women and children. They count only men. Men, family heads that have died were 70,000. Just because David counted people. When you sit down and make a boast, be careful. Ah, oh, hello. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I'm just coming now. Yeah, you know, school is these days. So we are just, oh, these days, you just want to boast so that somebody else will feel small. I tell you, don't let that angel look at you. In the house of the Lord. That's why. Right. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Listen to me. When you enter into the tabernacle, pay attention to what I'm saying. When you enter into the tabernacle, keep your feet. You know, some people even chew gum and enter inside the tabernacle. That you didn't fall down and die does not mean that you are still alive. You are dead. Because grace is heavier than the law. Amen. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. The sanctuary where you sit down and discuss business. The angels started killing from Dan. You know, Israel is not a white place. The width is not so much. He started in Dan. He started killing. Coming. As he came, he entered into Jerusalem. He killed. But in Jerusalem, there's a place that he cannot kill and pass that place. Because in that place, that's where those two cherubims stood. The threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. Now, I want to show you what happened. Read the next verse. Tell us the verse you are reading. Verse 16. Yes. And David lifted up his eyes uh -huh. and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven. This angel is so small that his head was in heaven. And his leg was on earth. That's how small he looked. So that you don't get confused and say, but Joshua saw him. Yes! <laughs> Same one. Amen. Amen. He stood 
Little children have seen something like that here before. Amen. Amen. They saw the man looking down from here. But that's not the same one. It's not Michael. That was with Gabriel. Because Michael don't come to Nigeria. Amen. Amen. The Bible says he is standing for, the, for thy people Israel. He doesn't leave that place. Now, watch what you're going to read next. And that is the position of Michael today, where it is, where you're going to read. What do you say there? Having a drawn sword in his hand. He had a drawn sword in his hand. Stretched out over Jerusalem. He stretched it over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. Yes, sir. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I, it is that have seen and done evil indeed. Mm -hmm. But as for this sheep, as for this sheep, what have they done? What have they done? Let thy hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house. Listen, but not on these thy people. Yes, that they should be placed. Listen to me. If David was not in Jerusalem, he would have died. You know, people don't understand. Amen. Praise the Lord. I went to a particular church and there was this confusion. So I asked the brother, I said, on what side are you? He said, there is there are no two sides in the church. I said, that is wise. There are no two sides. If the people had run into Jerusalem and ran to David's quarter, they wouldn't die. They shall prosper that pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. You see people I was in India. It was in India. And a brother was just creating confusion. Somebody sleeping at the back there. A brother was just creating confusion in the church. Oh, his ministry, if he was the pastor of this church, things would have been so nice. He even had the bonus to tell me that. I just went to greet him. Brother, God bless you. He said, yes, we are the ones that are, in fact, in fact, we are the ones that are supposed to be. You can see the pride. Somebody should read. Before they say something, I said, brother, you read. He's already reading. I said, brother, sit down. Let that person read. He did it twice. The third time, I stood up. I wore my garment. I said, brother, stand up. He stood up. I said, come forward. He came forward. I said, church, do you see this brother? He's anointed. And then, he now put his head well. He's really anointed. And because he's so anointed, this pastor is too small to pastor him, and these people are too small to be his fellow brothers and sisters. So brother, I release you in the name of Jesus. Go and start your church. Go. He started crying. Why are you crying? Just go. You, are not, you don't belong here again. You are still a child of God, but leave this place. Cause be anyone that follows a rebellious man. That's what the Bible says. Amen. You don't need to, don't, don't, he said don't join hand with that. Push him out. And I was waiting. They said, ah, is he going? I said, if he doesn't leave, I'm not preaching. And that's how the church had peace. 
He's still a child of God. But let him go somewhere else. Praise the Lord. The angel killed from Dan, Bathsheba, and came. When he came to Jerusalem, he stretched his sword. The Lord said, wait. Since that day, that is how he has been. Some Muslims have seen him that way. Children of God, go on YouTube and find testimonies, Jewish testimonies, when they came back to their homeland in 1947, 48, 49, 50, when the Arabs were attacked them with sophisticated guns and weapons. They had only nails for bullets. Watch the Israeli war. I think I have that video. I'm going to send them to you. Short clips. Say they started killing these people. They were running. They were shooting. Then their bullets got finished. Their nail bullet got finished. They ran and hid themselves, waiting for the Arabs to come and destroy them. When the Arabs came to these unarmed Israelites, as they got there, I don't know what they saw. You know, the Israelites did not know what they what what they what they what they've seen. They went back, running, left their guns and ran away. When they later asked them, they say. Didn't you see that man with a drawn sword standing like this? Then I said, no, you are making a mistake. That man has always been there. The Bible says he standed for thy people, Israel. Why did this killing stop there? That's the gate of Eden. That's where it is. And that's where Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac. And that's where Solomon had to build the temple. First, let's read it from where? From where? First. Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. Quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 3. Verse 1. You are still going to continue your reading, Brother Kinsley, because how did God take that place for David to build his house? Second Chronicles chapter 3. From verse 1. From verse 1. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. In Mount Moriah. In Mount Moriah. Where the Lord appeared unto David his father. Thank you. In the place that David had Prepared uh -huh. the threshing floor. The threshing floor of the Onan, Jebusite. the Jebusite. He used this verse to connect Moriah to Abraham. Take thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, to the Mount of Moriah, and I will show you one of the mountains there to sacrifice thy son unto me. Same place. Same place. Oh, brothers and sisters. Let's get back. How did Onan do with that place? Go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 21. What verse were you reading? Verse 18. 18, yes. Then the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar Unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Onan, the Jebusite. Excuse me, excuse me. Is it that same angel that was standing there like this that came to speak to David? No. It's the other one. Are you understanding me? <laughs> this other angel, he does not talk. Each time he speaks, you will hear him say, Pull off thy shoes, for this place is a holy place. That's what he will say. But go and do this. Go and prepare. You're going to have a child. He's not in that ministry. Amen. Amen. His son is, pull off thy shoes for there where thou standest is a holy place. We are standing <laughs> on holy grounds. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus.
Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground hallelujah do you hear that what happened the next verse it was the the other angel of the Lord Gabriel the announcer that told God tell David to go and build a altar there where the angel is standing let him go and build a altar there not to leave that place that's why no matter how they destroyed the temple that wall is still standing there one wall is still standing there a sign in Israel you can't finish you can't finish that place how did Onan? How did Onan get it? Onan has to also catch a revelation. Show me something. Next verse. Verse 19. And David went up at the saying of God, which he speak in the name of the Lord. And Onan turned back and saw the angel. Onan! The Jebusite! He also he saw the angel. Not only him. And who? And his four sons with him. Stop. Hid themselves. Do you see something? Why? Why is God showing Onan, the Jebusite? Because he wants him to release that place. So you don't look at a case of forcing someone. Release it. It's not your place. And when David came, Onan said on his own, I give it to you. David said, no. There is a law concerning offering. If your offering does not pain you, God did not accept it. There is a law about offering. Those of us who used to do like this from our pocket, <laughs> you are, don't forget about it. That's the law. David understood the law of offering is that it must cost you. And God is patient to wait for you. Yes. He does not ask you what he didn't give you. No. He knows he gives. And if you don't have now, you will have later. But your heart matters. Great men, David, Solomon, great minds. Look at them. From a small boy of men following sheep and no education to a great king that the whole world must, not, must, must learn about. What did he have? God. And you are having an excuse that you don't have a father who was a politician. Shame to you. Which father that was a politician? Who was his father? A nobody. But he had God. He did not give his body to fornication and adultery. No. He waited. He kept himself until the time. May the Lord bless us tonight. We'd like to stop here this evening. And we know just to, this subject this evening was to clear some doubts and to answer those questions, especially as we are receiving day and night. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayers tonight. You talk to the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you. For your word, thy word is true. There are two cherubims overlaying the Ark of Covenant. There are two cherubims that were set there. And Lord, it's a wonderful thing for us to know that in this generation, God sent us Elijah the prophet in the person of William Branham and the angel of that ministry was the angel of the Lord Gabriel so we have touched it we have taste of it and we have no excuse thank you father for the power that is in your word and for the truth that we share. Even right now, Lord, we pray. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. If there be any need tonight, if there be any need tonight, Lord, any soul that is hunger for the word of God, hunger for truth, let the power of God come down and manifest in the name of Jesus. Pray tonight, Lord, that your anointing will fall on your people and energize their spirit, man. Let there be a release of your power. Let there be healing. Lord, we pray for Brother Smart's daughter who was operated a few days ago. May she recover fully in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Brother Colady's daughter. Lord, the wife spoke to my wife today. In pains, I pray, Father. Remember us and remember that child. Bring perfect healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Remembering the child in the hospital, let there be victory completely. Remembering, O oh God, may your anointing break the yoke. Do a new thing in our midst. Break the chain of darkness. Destroy the power of darkness, Lord. Give victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, every closed doors, I command it to be pulled down in Jesus' name. May there be access to your children, the enablement in everything that they do. Oh God, bless the hands of your people. Let there be visitation, oh God, tonight. We pray, Father, the Lord, you will reveal yourself. Let there be angelic visitation tonight. Let there be angelic visitation in their ways. May their eyes begin to be open. May their ears begin to be open. Let something new happen in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, thank you tonight. Is there anyone in the need, O oh God, that is watching, O oh Lord, from any country, O oh Father, among those that are following us online, I pray, Father Lord, may you touch them right now. May they experience this same power that we are experiencing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we thank you. Unto the Lord be glory. Great things he has done. In Jesus' name we pray, believing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands for the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. We thank the Lord for everything. Amen. The Lord bless you. Go home. Study. We came tonight to study. Just look at those scriptures that we have put together. Look at it. Put it together. But from next week, for those of us who are slow learners, it's not a crime that you, you don't rush to understand. It's not, a, it's not a sin. You will have this message next week to be ready, and then you can study it. It's all in there. All that I've been saying is from here. And the Lord will grant you grace in the name of Jesus Christ. And those of you who are capable of supporting the printing, please let us know. See, Brother Kinsley, amen. And it will go a long way to help us. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. Uh, the announcement tonight, amen, is we are actually planning, like I said, we'll draw a committee to plan for a conference in January. Amen. This conference is to bring in other denominational churches so they could have opportunity of hearing what we are hearing. Especially the young people. Amen. And uh, we need to start planning about it. It could be, it could be one night. Night to be better on a Friday. So we could have what they used to like, a lot of singing. And then we will do our preaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we just need to come together to arrange that. 
the Lord will give us the wisdom. There must be a way to reach us out to others. Amen. Brother James, you are welcome, sir. The Lord bless you richly. Brother James used to be our treasurer when I was pastoring him some 22 years ago. Amen. The church that some of you have visited, the Oneness Organization Church there. Amen. That's where we used to be together. I was surprised to hear his call this morning and I told him, just come around when you close from office. Amen. The Lord bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, saints of God, thank you for paying attention to the word. Continue to study and the Lord will grant us grace. We'll just take our offerings and then we'll bring the service to a close. Let's take this hymn. The end of it. Let's be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Amen. What number is that? Two two zero. Two hundred and twenty. Ah ah. La 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 Amen. Bless be the time that by Hallelujah. Our hearts in Christ and Lord. Oh yes. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our father's throne, before our father's throne, we pour out a prayer. We pour our hearts and pray. And we are home, our aims are one, our comfort and our care. Hallelujah. On the part, oh, when we are so it gives us in what pain, it gives us in what pain, but we shall still be joining heart, but we shall still be joining heart. hope to meet again. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Father, bless the hands of your children in all our endeavors. We trust in you. Thank you for all that you have done. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be our portion till we meet again in the name of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. The Lord bless you. Good night and sweet dreams. <laughs>